Hello guys. This is D Tech. Today we are going to go through the very basic FortiGate configuration. We will be using the 200F model which is the latest release during this time of recording. First thing we have to do is to change the computer IP address. They must be in the same subnet with the FortiGate 200F management port which is 192.168.1.99. Now, open your web browser and enter the management IP. Login using the default user account with username admin and no password. In the first boot of the device or after factory reset, you must configure the device password. Enter your desired password. You will have to log in again, enter the username and the new configured password. In this window, you can check the device details, the license, the host name which we are about to change, the device serial number, the firmware version which this version 6.2.4. Operation mode, date, and time, device uptime and the one IP address. Now, we will change the host name. To do that, go to system then select settings. You can input your desired host name or usually the company name. You can also change the time zone from here. If you don't like green color then you can change it here, we have some few options. But we will use the default theme for now. You can also change the idle timeout in this window. The idle timeout setting determines how long a session is valid. Let's enter 30 minutes. Once done, click apply. We will now configure the network interfaces. Go to Network then Interfaces. This is where you configure your LAN network and WAN network addresses, and this management IP netmask. We will first configure the WAN interface. From our topology the port 15 is our WAN interface and it's currently in the hardware switch, so we have to remove from that group and set it as our internet facing interface. You can enter your alias as your guide. Set the interface role to 1 since this is the internet facing interface. Set the addressing mode to manual and enter IP net mask provided by your ISP. If you're planning to access the device from the internet through HTTPS and SSH and if you want the device to be pingable then you can enable it here. Do not allow HTTP and Telnet on internet facing interface for better security. But, this is all depends on your personal preferences. Click on OK to save the configuration. From here, you can see the IP net mask we configured and also the enabled administrative access. We will now proceed to the LAN interface. You can set the alias. Set the interface's role to LAN. Set the addressing mode to manual and enter the IP net mask using the IP address you want to assign. For the administrative access you can enable HTTPS access. SSH for secured remote connection. You may enable ping for testing and troubleshooting purposes. Enable DHCP if you plan this device to be your DHCP server. Enter the address range. Remember the DHCP range, you may want to avoid all of the IP addresses between 10.1.1.100 to 10.1.1.254 when you're assigning static IP addresses. For the DNS server, if you host your own DNS or you have Active Directory then you can enter the IP address. If not, then we will use Google DNS and Cloudflare DNS.
you may want to enable device detection, it is intended for devices directly connected to your LAN ports. This is very useful for troubleshooting. Click on OK to save your configuration. Let's now configure the static route. Go to network and select static route. We need to create new route to allow the FortiGate to reach the internet. Choose subnet and leave it to 8 zeros. 8 zeros means you can access anything or all. Set the gateway IP to the IP provided by your ISP. In my case, it's the ISP router 192.168.0.2. Select the interface using the internet facing interface. We will leave the administrative distance as default. Click on OK to save the configuration. From here, we can see the new configured route. Let's now configure the policy, go to policy and objects and select IPv4 policy. This FortiGate 200F don't have any pre-configured policy. We will create a new policy which is all to all. It means, internal network can access everything and can use any protocols at any time. No schedule, no filtering and no restrictions. To do this, click on create new. Let S give a name of LAN to all. Incoming interface is the LAN or internal network. Outgoing interface is our internet facing interface. For the source we will add new address using the internal subnet. Name it as local LAN. Enter the internal LAN IP netmask. Destination to all. Schedule to always and services to all. For security profiles, we are going to use the default profiles. Click on OK to save the configuration. You can see that there's an error which is all source interfaces are down. We encountered this issue because we configured the device using the management port and there's no active device plugged into internal ports. We will now plug in the computer to the port 1 which is a part of the LAN interfaces for us to test the configuration. We also have to reconfigure the computer IP address to be in the same subnet with the internal network. Open your browser and enter the LAN default gateway. Enter your username and password. Let's now test the configuration. Hey, what happened? I will explain one thing. If the FortiGate device is not yet activated or the license has been expired, then you are not able to access the internet if the web filtering is enabled. We enabled the web filtering earlier during the configuration. I did it on purpose just for additional review. This was our configuration earlier. Let's now try to disable the web filter profile then test the configuration again. Now, it's working, we can now reach google.com and fortinet.com. You can see the traffic going out to the internet. If you want to monitor the traffic for this policy then you can go to Fortiview. In this window you can check the source IP or device, destination IP or country, websites, etc. The other way is going to log and report and select forward traffic. You can click on any log you want to view and you can see all the details on the right. Click on add filter and from here you have a lot of choices also to select. You can choose source IP or device, destination, users, by policy etc.
We will now configure the per service policy which is recommended and for better security. To do this, we can simply copy, paste and edit the policy. Right click on the policy you want to clone. From here you have few options but we will choose copy for cloning. Now, right click again on the policy and you will have two options to paste, either paste above or below the copied policy. We will have to edit the policy, we will configure first the DNS traffic so we'll enter the name DNS, leave the rest to default except for the service, we need to change to DNS. We only need to change the name and the service. Click on OK to save the changes. Now, we have to enable the policy. Next is the HTTP and HTTPS traffic. We can do the same process again. You can name it as HTTP HTTPS. In the service option we need to change to HTTP and HTTPS. Click on OK. Now, enable the policy. Next, we will create another policy for email services. Name it as mail. And for the service we will add the service group email access. All of the email services are in this group. You can now enable the policy. Every time we made some change you will see the notification at the bottom. We will create those basic four policy for this demonstration. For the policy, the rule is top comes first, so first traffic would hit the DNS, then HTTP HTTPS going down to the bottom. You can create more policies then watch out for the LAN to all policy. If the traffic is not hitting that policy then you can disable it. Maybe few months depending on the size of the company. Let's do a quick test for Google.com and Fortinet.com. Great. It's working. Next is we're going to check the very basic security profiles since we just used the default profile earlier. Go to security profile. First, is antivirus. You can select the default profile and edit it based on your preference. Same goes with the web filter. You can block those adult contents. Peer-to-peer -peer file sharing if you want to minimize the downloads, you can check all these other categories. You can edit your DNS profile if you want. For the application control you can clone and edit the profile you want. You can block games category. Even though the social media if you're not sure what's under that category then you can choose view signatures to view the application signatures. And, you have a lot of options. You can see the the Facebook which is the most visited social media. Click on apply to save the configuration. 
Now we are going to apply those security profiles we just created. We will apply the new created profile, enable DNS since this is for the DNS traffic, and we can disable the application control. For the HTTP HTTPS profile we will enable the antivirus, web filter, application control, and SSL inspection. Click on OK to save the configuration. You can edit the email access. And lastly, the LAN to all, since this policy will catch all the remaining traffic then we must enable all security profiles available. You can keep on creating more policies and security profiles. Then. After a few months of monitoring then you can disable this policy. This depends on the size of the organization, the bigger the more challenging, the smaller the easier. We will now proceed to the last process. One of the most and very important process that can save your life. Backup and restore. It is recommended to back up your configuration once you're done configuring the device or every time you made some changes. You will be in a very difficult situation if you don't have backup configuration. You can also configure the automated backup of the configuration. To back up the config, click on the user at the top. Select configuration and you will have option to backup restore and revisions we will choose backup click on OK to proceed now open the downloaded backup file we will take a look on the file name Igoro Tech is the host name followed by the year month and date and the remaining with the exact time of backup Next process is restoring the backup file. For this demonstration we will factory reset the device. During the restoration, you have to consider two things, ensure no power interruption and do not manually reboot your device during the process. To do this, open the CLI. Run the command exe factory reset. You will be asked if you want to continue. Type Y to proceed. The factory reset takes time but for this Fortigate 200F, I'm really surprised by the process. After reset, you need to log in again using the default IP address. Enter the default username with no password then create new password for your account. To restore the configuration, click the user at the top, click on configuration and choose restore. Now you will locate and upload the configuration file. Enter the password if you have configured it during the backup process. If not, simply click on OK. Wait for the device to finish the process. That's all for today's demonstration. I really hope you liked this video. If you do, please like, share and subscribe. Also, Click on the bell button for you to be notified for more upcoming videos. Thank you and see you in the next video.